And I have to say, film and theater are such different mediums. Mm-hmm. It takes the same skills, but the approach is so different that I can't. And I haven't done enough of the TV and film as compared to the Broadway to to really compare. It to me, it's like apples and oranges. Right. You know, it, it's just such a different thing and a different feeling. You know, um, when you're filming to film one scene, it takes weeks sometimes depending on how large it is or it's just you know it's a different thing whereas when you're doing a play yes you rehearse and rehearse but then once you're in it you know your character has that emotional build from beginning to end and you do it every night you know and it's you creating this whole scene right then and there whereas in film you know in a whole day you might only get you know five pages done of mm-hmm. the whole story or whatever, so it's just a different, a different, uh, a different thing. Apples and oranges. I can't quite compare them yet. See what, right. they, what yeah. are what I like best. You know, right. I enjoy doing both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> now well, I have I, a question I, from Jen. Uh, Jen is in our chat room, and she wanted to know about Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Was it anything like the movie? And had you seen the movie? I had seen the movie uh, years ago, um, but I, I kind of purposely didn't rewatch it just because I didn't want um, it to influence what I did. Or I just wanted mm-hmm. to enjoy this experience for what it is. But I, I had seen it uh, years prior, and it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun that show. <laughs> we had so many yeah. different costumes, and I played one of the three divas, and we start the show and. We come flying down in from the ceiling, and so that was an experience I had never had before. I'd never flown in a show, so I got a lot of firsts. I, I always I see when I see people doing that, flying through a theater. I was just always so amazed by that, and and always wondered what's going through an actor's mind when they are being flown all over the place. Well, the first time I had to do it. I have to say it was a little scary, but but actually there are two different mechanisms how I was flown. The first time, like when we begin the show, we're in a harness, which is kind of like, well, it, it straps around your waist. So like you step into it kind of like, you know, a, a diaper almost. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not, <laughs> you know, but and it, so it hooks and you're hooked in there and you feel really secure. So that wasn't scary. But when I come flying down in at the, the finale of the show, we're standing on these perches, which are decorated like trees. And so there's a platform, and I'm standing on it, and there's a tree behind me, and then I have a belt on that gets mm-hmm. hooked in the back, and that's it. That's I'm just hanging from that little belt around my waist. Mm-hmm. And so if it's not tight enough or whatever, you're you start you know you're leaning forward. You're not going to come out of it. But mm-hmm. I'll tell you, the first time I went up in it, oh my gosh, I, I can't even imagine. I had a I had a little mini like panic attack. I started yeah. crying. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was definitely was not a Peter Pan moment then. <laughs> not in that moment. But then, of course, you get used to it, and and mm-hmm. then, then obviously, even by the time that I had to do it in the show, I was fine. It was fine, but that first time, the very first time, I was like, oh, no. (laughs) She also wanted to know if you have a favorite ABBA song. Mm. Dancing Queen. (laughs) That's mine, too. That's mine, too. Awesome. I can't say it's mine. (laughs) No, what's yours? It, it's hard to it's hard to even say because I like a lot of the obscure um, stuff that not everybody knows. I mm-hmm. think uh, the King Kong song is my favorite, and I'm sure nobody knows what in the world that song is. But it's it's right. got such a really awesome beat and sound to it. It's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. Uh, yeah, because I never heard of that either. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I am I'm a I'm actually a quite a big ABBA fan and I I love almost everything they've ever done and like I said the obscure stuff included. It, it's yeah. <laughs> their their music is fantastic. But I'm I actually, I actually wanted Huh? Go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say, I'm actually looking that up on YouTube now, and it, it does exist. It's like, wow. So I'm going to have to listen to I'm that. I'm not making this up. <laughs> <laughs> What's I've called never heard of that. The King, the King Kong song. Okay, I'll mm-hmm. look it up, too. <laughs> I forget what album it's on, but it, it was, like I said, it's one of the more obscure, hidden, lower than the totem pole tracks that they've ever done. Um, that and. I'm sure you've heard of Eagle, but Eagle is a beautiful song as well. But um, I actually wanted to ask Lisa about 9 to 5. I'm curious if you saw the movie before doing the performance and, you know, how it differed from the movie. Because I haven't seen the play. I've only seen the movie. (laughs) Well, I love the movie. It's one of my... It's one of my favorite movies. Um, And, of course, Mm -hmm. because they turned it into a musical, yes, it's much different. I mean, the basic plot plot is the same and the characters are the same, uh and they did bring in quite a bit of the same dialogue and and scenes and whatnot, but Mm -hmm. it was musicalized, which automatically makes it a different thing. So the the same characters that you love, but... um, but a little more more so just, theatrical and uh, right more and more music more more mm-hmm. songs sung. Yeah, exactly. obviously the main songs that were in the movie are there, but mm-hmm. but more as well added. Yeah, and I and find that when I read a book about um, whatever story, let's just say uh, I pick nine to five or something, I read that book, and then I'll see the movie. And I'll see such a a big difference sometimes. And to me, the books are always better. Mm. And maybe it's just because I read it first. Sure. Well, and I think in a book, there's so much more detail that you can Mm -hmm. add. Like you're reading a character's thoughts. Whereas when you see something live, unless it's a voiceover in a movie, but it's Mm -hmm. especially a, a play, you can't. It has to be portrayed on the actor's face, and you're not always going to get all of that yes, detail that yes. you can write yes. of what a character is thinking in a play or a movie. You know, so I always, quite honestly, enjoy the books as well. I feel like the world can be fleshed out and pinpointed more accurately, even even if um, you know, in a book, it's describing the scene of something. You know, you're reading each aspect as where they can do it perfectly in a movie and they'll you know, pan the shot of what they see, it still goes by much faster than you can read it in the book. So it doesn't mm-hmm. all sink in, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, I agree. I agree there's usually more detail in a book and it lets you kind of live in it a little bit longer. Right, right. And I, I like the idea of being able to use your own interpretation of whatever you're reading and, of course, your um imagination and then sure. it is nice to see it become a play or become you know a movie even if it's not exactly the same yeah definitely or sometimes and, and i've actually gone and seen a movie first and then read the book and it's kind mm-hmm. of interesting to then have a picture and an idea in your head when you're right. reading the book right. i've done i've done both ways yeah, yeah, that works too. I think a lot of uh, kids these days don't read enough because of all the different ways to access watching these movies, and um, I think they're losing out on, on doing that. Most definitely. Yeah, my uh, my son's only two and a half, but uh, he we read to him all the time. I hope to. My husband is an avid book reader and loves reading and and um, and I do as well, but uh, not not as much as my husband. He could read if he could only do that. He would. <laughs> um, so, but uh, so I'm you know hoping to pass that on to to him. You know because of course he loves watching TV and you know his Max and Ruby shows and Thomas mm-hmm. the Train. And we definitely have to set a limit, or he right. would sit there and watch it for as long as he you know as long as he wanted and right. you know, they have to get out there and use their imagination and, and play with things and you know mm-hmm. toys and, <laughs> and not something that's just so inactive you know that he's not participating in so right right um i would imagine though it's a little different than when i watch 
these cartoons or Mickey Mouse or something with my grandsons, and I sing along to it with them, that your son enjoys it so much more because you can actually sing. (laughs) Well, it's funny because whenever I just start singing like a regular song song, he says, no, no, not that song. No, he doesn't want me to sing. (laughs) <laughs> but but he likes when I make up silly songs. Then then it's fine. <laughs> but he only likes it if it's silly. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love he gets like he's like no no not that song. <laughs> I'm like this is or or sometimes if I have to warm up for a concert or an audition or something he gets very mad. He's like no. Um, I said this is what mommy does for a living. I have to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> now, will you put him in all kinds of different after-school activities once he starts going to school so that, that he doesn't get in school as far as the arts are concerned? Um, I don't know yet. We'll just have to see what he Is likes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if he wants to play sports, great, because I grew up playing sports. Did you? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. What would you play? Um, I played softball, volleyball. I did a little bit of basketball, but I wasn't, that wasn't my forte. Um, uh, but, yeah, I did all kinds. I played soccer. Um, I did all kinds of sports. Um, so it really, you know. Obviously, I'll introduce him to things and then mm-hmm. just kind of feel it out and see what he gravitates to. Right. I know because we do have to introduce a lot of things to our children that they might not know that they're interested in. So that's why I was curious sure. about yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Um, my one rule with my children was whatever we sign you up for because, oh, i got to play baseball, i got to play baseball. I gotta... Well, you're going to finish playing baseball for however many weeks or, you know, months it is right. if we're going to sign you up for it. You have to finish it. Right. Then if you don't want to continue and you want to do something else, that's fine. But you can't keep starting something and stopping because maybe in the middle you might find that you like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that, that's, a, good, that's a good plan. I'll keep that in mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's too little to, to start anything like that now. But, uh, right, but right. Yeah, that's the... That's yeah, beautiful. well, they start at what I think it's age five where they play T-ball. So mm-hmm. there you go. And then they've got a lot of mommy and me things and daddy and me things that yep. they can do when they're littler than that. So that should be interesting. I I almost envy you having a child that young because mine <laughs> are pretty much grown. Aww. And uh, But now I, I get to have some fun with the, my grandson, so... Sure, sure. So that's nice. And then I get to send them home, too. <laughs> exactly. They don't wake you up in the middle of the night. <laughs> so is there something that you'd like to do next? What do you have in mind, or do you have a plan? Oh, a plan. Um, <laughs> I just am auditioning. Uh, I am going to be doing a show, but which was possibly going to be opening on Broadway in the spring, but it has been postponed. So now I, I'm kind of free and just auditioning and um, looking for the next thing, whether it be a TV show, whether it be another Broadway show. I, I don't know. <laughs> so just kind of up for anything. As long as you're working and doing exactly. what you love. Yeah. Now, I'll, you, you know, I'll teach meanwhile and mm-hmm. and uh, just do what I do. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of actors, you know. What do you do in the downtime? Well, you look for other work. <laughs> that's what you do. You well, know? at least you're doing something in your downtime that you enjoy. I mean, I've heard, you know, millions and millions of stories like everybody else has about everybody having to wait tables and how much they hated it, you know. Sure. All they wanted to do was act. So at least you have a good side job. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do enjoy it. Um, so I do. I am lucky in that way. Do you have any uh, plans to do another album? 
Not anytime soon, no. But hopefully it's 